Hi, everybody. Welcome. We'll give it a minute to get everyone in and joining us. But thank you so much for attending today. We're so glad that you're here. Um, if you're in Illinois, it's a little bit cold and rainy today. Kendall and Sydney don't know that, but it is. It's cold <laughs> and rainy here in the, the <laughs> Illinois area. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, on behalf of IACAC and StriveScan, we're thrilled that you were able um, to participate in the Santa Clara presentation this afternoon. So we've got a, a great presentation for you today. Just a couple of quick housekeeping pieces um, from IACAC and from StriveScan, the, the co-hosts of this program today. If you have questions, please utilize the Q&A function um, and Sydney and Kendall will get to those questions as they come in. As a participant, your microphone and video are off, so they cannot see you, we cannot see you or hear you. So make sure that you're utilizing the Q&A to ask your questions. Um, this is actually the last week of sessions for this virtual college exploration program through IACAC and StriveScan. Um, but we do have a couple of days left. If you're interested, IACAC.org has the remaining sessions. Feel free to sign up for any remaining sessions. And you'll also be able to check out the recording for this presentation and all of the other previous um, and future presentations at IACAC.org. So with that, I'm gonna stop my screen share and let Kendall and Sydney take over. Thanks awesome. everyone. Awesome, thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Kendall Wolbrun and I'm an Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission at Santa Clara University in Santa Clara, California. Um, it's great to see interest in our students in Illinois. I am the counselor that works specifically with students from Illinois. Um, I'm also from Illinois myself, so I'm pretty familiar with the area. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly after today. Um, I'm also joined today by Sydney, who's one of our current students at Santa Clara and is also from Illinois. Sydney, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Sydney Meyer. I'm currently a junior at Santa Clara. Um, I'm originally from Oak Park, Illinois, which is the first suburb west of the city of Chicago. Um, and at school, I'm a theater and child studies double major. Awesome. Thanks, Sydney. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started today with a quick presentation, kind of covering some of the main things that we think are pretty special about Santa Clara. Um, I'll also dive into the application process a little bit, um, showing you some of the things that we're looking for in the application and pieces that we require. At the end, we'll open up for Q&A. Um, Sydney and I are both happy to answer questions. Um, so please be thinking of those along the way. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box on Zoom and we'll get to them after the presentation. Um, so to get started, there are three main things that I like to talk to students about when discussing Santa Clara that I think really make Santa Clara stand, stand out when you take them together and really can't be found anywhere else. So the first one would be our location. We are in the heart of the Silicon Valley in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, we're just 10 minutes from the San Jose International Airport, so it's really easy for all of you coming from Illinois um, to go back and forth for school, breaks, going back home, um, makes it pretty easy. Um, there is just so much that the Bay Area has to offer, especially things that you can't find in the Midwest. I know Growing up there myself, I wasn't close to the water or the mountains or anything like that. And so there are so many new things to do and explore in the Bay Area. We're just about five to 10 minutes from San Jose, which is the 10th largest city in the country. So um, it's, campus is pretty suburban and residential, but you have that big city urban feel really close by. So lots of great restaurants to go explore, go out to dinner with friends. Um, Santa Cruz is just about 40 minutes south of campus and that's the beach. So if you wanna go learn to surf, if you wanna hang out at the boardwalk or just walk on the beach near the water with your friends, that's a popular weekend destination for students as is San Francisco. So there's a train right across the street from campus that'll take you up into the city in just a little over an hour. Um, so it drops you off right in front of Oracle Park where the San Francisco Giants play and the new Chase Center where the Warriors play. Um, so lots of great things to do and explore in the Bay Area. If you're outdoorsy, there are lots of things to do as well. So lots of great places pretty near campus to go hiking, um, kayaking, anything like that. But if you want to go a little farther away to the mountains, um, uh, Lake Tahoe and Yosemite are each about a four hour drive. So if you want to go learn to ski, snowboard in the winter, lots of great hiking when it's warmer out too. Those are great places to go. 
About 55% of our students at Santa Clara will come from the state of California, but I remind students, especially those coming from out of state, that California is a huge state. I think it takes over 15 hours to drive from top to bottom. So many of our in-state students are actually coming from seven or eight hours away. So they're not necessarily close to home either. Um, we're not a suitcase campus or a commuter school. You will be required to live on campus your first two years. Um, and students tend to stay on campus over the weekends. And Sydney can talk a little bit more about what's offered on campus later, um, but there's always something going on. So even our local students tend to stay on campus over the weekends. The other 45% of our students represent almost every state in the country and many countries around the world. So we do have a lot of geographic diversity. Um, for the past few years, Illinois has been our second largest state outside of California. So Washington always takes that first spot, um, but we are definitely growing an in interest in Illinois in particular um, uh, around the Chicago area, especially. I'd say the, the biggest benefit for our students um, because of our location professionally is the opportunity to connect with and network with the companies that exist in Silicon Valley. So Google, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Yahoo, Twitter, all these things that you probably use on a daily basis, their offices are 20 to 30 minutes from campus. And so when we have a career fair on campus, um, they're sending their recruiters because it's really convenient for them. And it's a really great benefit for our students to be able to connect with them one-on-one, -on -one, make those personal connections. Um, I've heard a lot of our current students say too that when they go and interview for these jobs or internships, there's often a Santa Clara alum in the room. And so they're able to make that personal connection. Uh, many of our alumni stick around the Bay Area and work at these companies. And so there really is an understanding of the value of a Santa Clara education. The next thing would be our Jesuit identity. So we are a Jesuit Catholic school, all about the Jesuit values of educating the whole person, mind, body, and spirit, the term cura personalis or care of the person. So really making sure that our students are cared for as individuals in every aspect of their experience at Santa Clara. The Jesuit values of the importance of education and social justice and service are really important in everything that we do at Santa Clara as well. And I think those values really influence the kinds of classes you'll take as part of our core curriculum. So yes, you take your math, science, humanities classes, but you'll also take classes in ethics, civic engagement, diversity, cultures and ideas. You do take three religion courses as part of the core curriculum, but we offer over 150 options. So you don't have to study Catholicism if you don't want to. Um, but my favorite core requirement is the ELSJ course or experiential learning for social justice. So as I mentioned, social justice is a big piece of the Jesuit values and it's really incorporated into what our students do both inside and outside the classroom. So this course and there are many to choose from, but will allow you to really apply what you're learning in the classroom to the real world and serve our local community. And so all of our students are involved in service learning in that way. Um, you definitely do not have to be Catholic to come to Santa Clara. So even though we are a Catholic school, only about 50% of our students will self-identify as Catholic or Christian on the Common App. The other 50% represent almost every other faith tradition or no faith background at all. And all are welcomed on campus um, religion is really something that you can make part of your experience if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be. And so, um, again, all of those perspectives are welcomed at Santa Clara. It's not something that will be forced onto you as a student. Um, and again, feel free to ask us about this later. I know Sydney has talked about this before, um, but it is a very welcoming place in many aspects. And then, as I mentioned, social justice service are really big pieces of the mission, both serving our local community and the global community. So there are lots of opportunities to get involved abroad. So study abroad is pretty popular. About 25% of our students um, study abroad at Santa Clara. I know Sydney was supposed to study abroad in Sydney, Australia this fall and unfortunately wasn't able to because of the pandemic. Um, but again, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer questions about that process. We also offer immersion programs, which are great trips to take over winter, spring or summer break. You're not taking a class, but you're really focusing on a social issue in another part of the country or the world and finding solutions to these problems by working with and learning from the local community. Um, again, Sydney was supposed to go on one to the Arizona-Mexico border to look at immigration over spring break that was unfortunately canceled. Um, but again, she'd be a great resource for asking more questions about those. 
Um, lastly, I think our size and educational experience really make Santa Clara a great enriching place to be. So we are a medium sized institution. We have about 5,500 undergraduate students on campus. Um, I really think that's the sweet spot between really small and really big and offer some of the benefits of both sizes. Um, so academically, you are going to really get a personalized experience. You'll see really small class sizes and average student to faculty ratio is pretty low as well. Um, you'll probably never see a class at Santa Clara more than 50 or 60 students. We just don't have huge lecture halls on campus. Um, the smallest I've ever heard of was four students. So that's a really personalized academic experience. But overall, you're really going to have the opportunity to get to know your professors well, your peers well, and make those relationships um, in the classroom. And then these last two numbers, I think, really speak to the value of a Santa Clara education and your return on investment. College is an expensive endeavor, and we recognize that. Um, so we want to make it worth your time and money that you're putting forward. So the retention rate is the number of first year students who choose to come back for a second year at 95%. Ours is one of the highest in the country. And I think it really speaks to how happy and satisfied students are with their experience at Santa Clara, their ability to be involved, to double major, double minor, and still um, participate in those organizations and form those relationships as students. And then that four year graduation rate is really important too. You're coming to college to get a degree. And at Santa Clara, we're really committed to getting you in and out in those four years so that you can go on and achieve all the other goals and dreams you have for yourselves. So um, the national four year graduation rate is only about 41% at 88%. Ours is over double that. We are on the quarter system. So I think it's a little more flexible, but ultimately I think we are just really committed to making sure our students have the support they need to finish that degree in time. To kind of transition over into the application process, um, we are on the Common App. It's the only application we use, um, so it makes it pretty easy. We do holistic review, which means that we look at both your academic and personal side. So the Common Application gives us a great way to evaluate both. Um, one really important thing to note when you apply to Santa Clara is that you actually don't apply to the university as a whole. Um, on your application, you'll select Santa Clara University on the Common App, but then there will be a question asking if you would like to be considered for the College of Arts and Sciences, the Levy School of Business, or the School of Engineering. So you don't necessarily have to pick a major. You are able to if you'd like, but you do need to pick the school that you'd like to be considered for. In terms of what we look at um, in the application process, um, so GPA is really important. Academically, we want to see how you've performed throughout high school and if you're prepared to take on those courses at Santa Clara. So we look at GPA on a 4.0 unweighted scale. And we only look at that unweighted GPA and we'll recalculate it if your transcript does not provide that. Because we're looking at that unweighted GPA, the rigor of your coursework is really important. So we want to see that you've challenged yourselves by taking any of those advanced honors, AP, IB, dual enrollment, whatever that looks like for you, that you've taken some of those courses and pushed yourself um, in those advanced classes. And we also look at your extracurriculars and community service. So this is through the activities list on the Common App. So all of the things that you're involved in in your school, your community, Maybe you have a part-time job, maybe you have family responsibilities you've taken on, especially in the past few months. All of that can be included there. Your story comes through on the personal statement. So this is the essay that's submitted to all the schools you apply to on the Common App. So not the place to talk about Santa Clara specifically, but really to share an experience um, or something that makes you who you are that we're not going to see anywhere else on the application. And then your interest in Santa Clara specifically will come through on the supplemental questions. So we have two on the Common App, really looking to see just if you've done your research and you understand why Santa Clara is a good fit for you. And um, we do require at least one letter of recommendation from an academic teacher, although we'll let you submit up to three recommendations total. And then the additional information and COVID-19 response are just optional questions to allow you to provide additional context if you feel it's necessary. And then lastly, you'll notice up at the top that we are test optional for at least the next two years. So if you're a junior or a senior this year, you will not be required to submit test scores to be considered for admission for merit scholarships or financial aid at Santa Clara. There is no advantage to submitting a score and there's no disadvantage to not submitting a score. So it really is test optional. 
And then finally, deadlines and financial aid. Um, you can see the deadlines on the screen. They're also on our website um, if you need to reference them later. The most important thing to note is that early decision one and two applications are binding. So this is saying Santa Clara is my number one choice. If I'm admitted, I'm going to come. Um, one important thing to note there is that you don't know your financial aid packaging when you apply. So if financial aid is a big factor in your decision, early decision is not the best way to go. Um, most of our students will apply early action or regular decision, and those are both non-binding. So you have until May 1st to let us know if you'd like to come if you are admitted. Um, you'll notice the first deadline is November 1st, so we're under two weeks away. Um, so if you're a senior looking to apply early, um, just be aware that that deadline is coming up quickly. And then lastly, for financial aid, all students are automatically considered for merit scholarships when they apply to Santa Clara. So there's no extra work you have to do there. We recognize you're doing enough as it is on your college applications. Um, for need-based financial aid, we do highly encourage all of our families to submit both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. About 75% of um, students at Santa Clara receive some form of aid. The merit scholarships are fairly competitive. They only go to about the top 10 to 15% of each incoming class. So the majority of our students do receive the need-based aid, which is why whether you think you're going to qualify or not, we highly encourage you to apply because you can't qualify if you don't submit the forms. Um, so you might as well see if you can get something from it. Um, I will, or you can see my email up here. It's also on our website. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me directly if you have questions later on. Um, but I will go ahead and take this down. Um, if you have any questions at this point for me or Sydney, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. We're happy to answer any of them. Um, while we wait for questions to come in, Sydney, do you wanna talk a little bit more about some of the things you're involved in on campus? Sure. Um, so outside of being an ambassador for the university, I am also in one of our five acapella groups on campus. Um, I'm also involved in our theater department. I've performed in shows, I've worked on the crew. So I know a lot about how the arts work at Santa Clara. Um, I'm also involved in off-campus Greek life. Um, so I'm in a sorority that is um, considered off-campus, um, but it's a great social thing that I get to do. Um, and like Kendall mentioned, I was supposed to go on an immersion trip last spring break to the Arizona-Mexico border. Unfortunately, it got canceled, but I did all of the preparation work for it, so I can answer any questions about that. Um, and I was also supposed to be studying abroad in Australia right now. Again, got canceled, um, but I applied. I know a lot about it as well because I went through some of the prep before everything got shut down. So I'd love to answer any questions that you have about any of that or, you know, what it's like to come to California as somebody who is not from California. So and I'd love to answer any questions you have. Thanks, Sydney. Um, I haven't seen any come in yet. Um, if anyone has questions, again, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Um, I guess since all of the students on the call are from Illinois, do you just want to talk a little bit about what your transition was like coming to school in California? Sure. Um, so I had never really been to California except to tour Santa Clara. So I didn't know what I was doing um, when I got out here. And it was definitely challenging for me in the beginning. Uh, while there are a lot of people from the Illinois area um, at Santa Clara, there was nobody from my high school who came with me. So I was completely alone and I really struggled in the beginning to kind of find my place and find my footing um, socially. I think academically, I felt very, very prepared for my high school. So that transition wasn't as difficult, um, but definitely it took me a while to kind of find groups of people that I really like to hang out with. But I think the best thing that I did was that I got involved in a lot of things fall quarter right away. Um, and so that helped me build my social circle and expose me to a bunch of different people all across the university. Um, and I was able to kind of like create this group of people that I love and have become my second family at my home away from home. And I think it took a while for me to, you know, settle in and realize that Santa Clara was where I was supposed to be. But when I came back um, fall quarter sophomore year after being away all summer was when I really realized that like I had this great community of people and I was really happy here and I was excited to come back. Um, and after that, it's been smooth sailing. You know, I mean, I've come back from my junior year. So clearly I like it enough to stay. Um, and I think that it can be really challenging in the beginning, but there are a lot of people at Santa Clara who want to help you and who want to help make that transition as smooth as it possibly can be. Um, so I definitely felt very supported at Santa Clara, even though I was very, very far away from where I'm from. 
Awesome, thanks, Sydney. Um, we still don't have any questions in the Q and A. Um, if anyone has one, please feel free feel free to put them in there. Um, if there aren't questions, we can also stop early. Um, but Sydney and I are happy to answer anything else you want to know about Santa Clara. No, nope, maybe there aren't any other questions. <laughs> That's okay too. They have your contact info though, yes. right? That your yeah. contact info was at the end of the presentation. So um, thank you for the information, appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Okay, so thanks everybody for coming today. We appreciate it. If you have questions about Santa Clara, you're wondering more about what life on campus is like, feel free to reach out to Kendall as you kind of navigate into this next um, part of your college search process. But on behalf of ICAC and, and StriveScan, the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan, appreciate you all coming today. Um, as, as we kind of wrap up the day, one quick note, if you can, when you close out of the screen, there's a quick four question survey that we would ask um, for your feedback, just to kind of gather your thoughts as you've participated in in these different sessions, um, how we can improve for um, what might inevitably inevitably be um, a virtual spring as well. So like I mentioned at the beginning, IACAC.org is where you'll find the recording of this presentation and all past and future presentations in our virtual college exploration program, in addition to um, signups for the remaining session. So thanks, Kendall. Thanks, Sydney. Um, go OPRF and um, we appreciate everyone joining us today. Have a great afternoon and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye everybody. Thank you all.